this is Rode and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today we have another great book, The Alexander the Great by Philip Freeman. Alexander the Great, the biography. Now, Philip Freeman was a professor at the Luther College in Iowa and he has done a great work and a, com a comprehensive job in writing a biography of Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great was a Macedonian king between age, his age of 19 to 32. And uh, during that time he pretty much conquered the entire known world at that time. Persia, India, Egypt, and so on. And uh, although it's uh, not a self help book in itself, I uh, love reading uh, biographies like this because they show us the great, this, what some of the greatest peoples in the world have done what they have thought, and uh, their characters. And I believe that there's a lot we can learn from them and emulate ourselves in order to actualize our own potential. But if you're um, into... If you're young and ambitious, I think you'll especially love the book. And by the way, a few years ago, in high school, in my third year of... Uh, yes, high school, I had a presentation about Alexander the Great. And... Um, I remember I was super nervous to recite it in front of my class and I literally memorized several pages of text and recited everything to the class. I just pummeled through. And I think uh, you can be grateful that uh, I'm not doing this right now. I write notes on the books and I create mind maps but I don't recite text. Which uh, would make me kind of a robot that just uh, recites lines without being conversational at all. Now, let's have a look at my favorite five big ideas from the book and how we can apply them to our lives. The first one is Bicephalus. So, this is a really beautiful story about Alexander. When he was about 12 years old, there was a uh, horse named Bicephalus, which uh, none, of the, um, none of his father, Philip, the Macedonian king, none of his father's uh, horse tamers could tame. And they believed the horse couldn't be tamed at all. But Alexander, 12 years old, opposed his father in front of all his men. And that must have taken some courage. And his father was, of course, angry at Alexander, but he persisted. Alexander persisted. And he said that he would pay his father 13 talents, which was enough to feed a person for a lifetime, if he wasn't able to succeed in taming the horse. Now, that showed a lot of courage, of course, and I kind of... I am um, also reminded of Iconoclasm, which uh, Gregory Burns talks about in his book Iconoclast. And an Iconoclast is one who does, does things that others say can't be done. And he's also one who sees things differently than other people. And Alexander saw what none else saw. He noticed that the horse was afraid of his own shadow. Therefore, he turned the horse against the sun. So he wouldn't see his own shadow. And then he called, talked to him calmly and slowly for several minutes before he mounted the horse. And then that amounted to a lifelong friendship between the horse and Alexander. And uh, yes, the, um, to get it really practical here, Gregory Burns gives us an example in his book Iconoclast. The number one tip to um, see things differently yourself, is to bombard your mind with positive stimuli. Read widely and deeply. Explore new cultures, explore new countries, meet many different new people and talk to them. Which of these are you going to jump more into? I'm all about the uh, reading books and I'm also getting more into getting to know different types of people right now. Next big idea is Iron Discipline. Really cool story. So uh, Philip um, was uh, Alexander's father, uh, a king of Macedonia, and he had uh, he visited the Thebans, and had discovered that a story about the Thebans in 371, that the Thebans crushed Sparta, their finest warriors, and people had made pretty much thought that the Spartans were invulnerable at that time. You've uh, seen the world uh, movie 300, right, where the Spartans killed about. It said that they killed about 300 Spartans, killed about 10 to 20,000 Persians. 
and that's uh, also pretty close to invulnerability, according to me. So, uh, the, but the Thebans had crushed the Spartans, and uh, as much as I love Spartan discipline, what was a what made the Thebans able to crush Spartans were iron discipline. And what's iron discipline? Well, let's go on to the next big idea. They drilled endlessly. They uh, practiced day and night, and they mastered the art of hoplite warfare, the uh, greatest warriors of Greece at that time. And uh, Philip's father was so inspired by this that he also wanted to drill his own soldiers endlessly back in Macedonia. So he started that, and uh, of course this was excruciating for his soldiers, and uh, even his officers were not relieved of, that, uh, of those rules that they had to follow. For example, one officer was caught drinking water when he wasn't supposed to, he wasn't really yet relieved of his duty, and that guy was whipped. Another one had um, taken a bath in camp, and he was relieved, he was fired, pretty much. He was not in command anymore. So it was pretty tough. But in other words, discipline came first. But eventually, these soldiers that had gone through this excruciating drill and repetition of and mastered their battle formations together, they received pride in their newfound abilities when they actually became those disciplines. It became second nature to them. They could do it in their sleep. And uh, that reminds me of uh, the uh, Little Book of Talent, which Daniel Coyle has written, and he says that uh, Repetition has a bad reputation. We see it as this drudgery that uh, doesn't amount to anything good at all. But it's literally the most effective way of building your skills in any area, because it makes your brain wires faster and more efficient. It makes uh, what uh, can be a small... Uh, it can be seen as small roads inside your brain. It becomes highways, where signal speeds travel from 2 miles per hour to 200 miles per hour when you do something again and again and again. And of course, as Aristotle says, excellence is not an act, but it's a habit. It's something you do consistently, again and again and again. Just like these videos that I create. Created over a hundred right now, and I noticed that I noticed clear differences in my skills between the first videos. It's literally ridiculous when I look at those, and when I look at these. So, for now, what is the number one discipline you have to install in your life in order to eat better or move uh, more consistently or sleep better? And those are pretty much the fundamentals that have to be in uh, play for order in order for us to actualize. So up here is self-actualization. Here are the fundamentals. You have those right. And then what's your number one that you need to excel at your craft? For me, it's Reading, writing, and teaching. It's really simple. I have to do those three things again and again and again until I achieve mastery. The 10,000 hour rule, which many people talk about, right? Figure out what it is as we go on to our next big idea, curiosity. I also uh, uh, thought about naming this idea Alexander the Scientist because it's a really cool idea. When uh, Alexander... okay. To have a bit of context, back in the days, people weren't used, were not used to using oil for heat. They were pretty much using wood for all um, ways of heating. And when Alexander was in Egypt, Egypt I think, he for the first time discovered oil. And uh, he had never seen how oil worked. And he was uh, astonished by how quickly it started uh, firing and becoming up into flames. In um, contrast to wood. So then, uh, a really smart guy in the court of Alexander, he uh, proposed that, uh, why not we uh, pour some oil over uh, that guy over there and see uh, what happens. Uh, put him in place and see what happens. And uh, Alexander, he was uh, a compassionate person and cared about other people. But uh, his uh, curiosity of how oil would work when poured over a person 
it uh, made him let go of all common sense and compassion for other people. So he said, of course, we'll pour oil over a person and set him afire. And so they did. And, <laughs> and what's, what's uh, so uh, funny about this and uh, a bit disturbing was that the guy they proposed to pour oil over was willing and happy to have it pour poured over himself. And he was willing to please Alexander. So, long story short, they poured over oil over him. He was uh, set ablaze. Alexander, of course, jumped out of his chair and tried to extinguish the flame with the water they had. And uh, the conclu conclusion they found out from this little science experiment was that uh, oil burns quite uh, violently. Yes, so it's uh, not something I would uh, recommend that you do. But uh, it also reminds me of uh, John Crumbles and uh, Ryan Babineau in their book Fail Fast, Fail Often, where they say that we need to follow our curiosity. Now, we don't follow, follow, follow it in these dangerous ways as Alexander did, but we want to follow our curiosity because one of the most important reasons that people don't act on life-changing opportunities is that they don't look for them. They are too worried about uh, what they can do to survive the day to day. And the second reason is that they don't act on them when they do see them. For example, I am really curious about personal development and a wide area of different subjects. And of course, I buy the books and read them and share the ideas to you. What is something you're really curious about right now in your life? It could be something in the area of relationships, meeting new people. It could be for your health, trying new different types of food or new different types of exercise. It can be your work, not new types of work you can try out, or new books, new subjects, like I love, in self-help. Think about that, and then follow your curiosity. Second big idea, my last big idea, courage. Philip tells us that uh, Alexander uh, was often taking on the most difficult of tasks. He prided himself in doing that. There's a lot of different stories of him always being the first into battle with his uh, army behind him. And uh, there's also one particular story I want to talk about. So uh, Alexander and his army were uh, going to siege a city. So they, uh, this city was surrounded by a thick wall. And uh, there was no way they could get into that city when la except a ladder on the back of it. And uh, Alexander was so courageous and maybe a bit dumbfounded that he was the first one to climb that ladder. And he actually jumped over to the other side of the wall. And, oh, and his soldiers were, oh my god, they were going to follow him. And uh, they all started climbing up the ladder and the ladder broke. So they were, they were of course anxious about uh, what would happen to their king, who was on the other side of the wall. And uh, he was... Um, two other different people. And of course, on the other side of the wall, their enemies were g <laughs> gathering around them. So they were in this corner, and uh, the people sh were shooting arrows at them and hitting them with swords. And Alexander was actually shot and quite, uh, quite dangerously wounded. But there was a guy who uh, would uh, defend him with his shield. So, to stop the story there, that was an insane act of courage, and again, a bit dumbfoundedness. But uh, there's no doubt that uh, Alexander was a truly courageous person. Which begs the question, what is it that you're a bit afraid of doing right now? And what's the first step you can take towards getting started with it, so you'll gain momentum? Okay, I'll tell you what that is for me. I have uh, now for about one year been reading, writing and teaching books about personal development. About a hundred of those books, I have written six page PDF notes to all of the books, but I haven't uh, made them available to you. I've only made these free videos available to you. But I'm now going to get up a website with a membership option for about $10 a month, or a real cheap sum, so you can also get access to the notes I write. And of course I'll start creating more types of products and the wisdom for you to actualize your potential. That's something I'm a bit nervous about right now, but that I'm going to act on, because I believe that there's a lot 
people like you can gain from reading that sorts of notes, where the concise wisdom from these books. All right, let's recap. Courage, take a step on the thing you need to be courageous about right now. Curiosity, follow your curiosity instead of the pressing it down. Discipline, drill endlessly, repetition, 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 as Aristotle says. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. Iron discipline can beat Spartan discipline. You can check out our videos on Self-Discipline, Spartan Discipline by Chris Thompson. We also have more books on Self-Discipline. You can just search it on YouTube. And Bicephalus, the guy, the boy who tamed Bicephalus. Through being courageous, standing up to his father, and seeing things differently. Now think about the one idea that jumped out at you, that resonated with you, and got you inspired to take some action. And now reflect on the one third step you can take towards embodying the idea more in your life, and then take that step as we actualize our lives and change the world together. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to sharing more wisdom with you soon. Have another awesome day. See ya.